Hi, welcome to Coding Droplets and thank you for watching this video. This is part two of Blazor Beginner to Advanced tutorial series. So if you are new to this series, you can find the playlist link in the video description and just open the link to find the previous videos. So in part two, I will walk you through Razor components. So first let's see what is a Razor component. A Razor component is a Razor file that can be reused. A Razor component can contain logic. A Razor component is a class. So in this video, I will walk you through the entire concepts and the entire processes or uh, the entire things about Razor components. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel named Coding Droplets if you have not subscribed it yet. And also press the bell icon so that you will get notified once we upload new videos. So before starting the development, first let's see the final output of the project we are developing in this video. So I will show you the page now. So I'm just refreshing it so you can see the final output from the page load itself. Okay, now the page is loading and you can see there is a loading message here. Contacts are loading. And once the contacts are loaded, immediately without a page refresh, you can see there is no page refresh draw. Immediately the page, uh, the contacts are loaded here. Okay, now here uh, I have placed a display email checkbox here. So uh, when I uncheck this checkbox, you can see that uh, here what I'm going to do is I need to hide the email addresses of each contacts. So I'm unchecking it. So you can see immediately the emails got hidden. Okay. And if I'm checking it again, immediately it got displayed. So it is very interactive. And now I need to show you some more. Uh, for each record, I have placed a show info button inside each record. So if I'm clicking the show info of this particular record, say Peter Bob, okay, uh, you can see immediately it show an information like the email address of Peter Bob is peter at gmail.com, okay? And if I'm clicking uh, the show info of John Thomas, immediately it will show here. So there is no page refresh happening. You might have noticed it. Now there is one more button for delete. So I'm deleting this particular contact, George David, okay? and immediately it has been deleted. Now here, I, if I need to hide the information, I'm clicking on show info again, and you can see it is hidden. Okay, it is like um, a toggle kind of button. So immediately it will hide and show the information. So here I need to, don't uh, bother about the design. The design is very basic design I have implemented for showing the demo. But here are what I need to show you is how interactive is uh, Blazor. So you can create this kind of interactive Blazor applications. So let us start the development now. So stay tuned and we will be continuing with the development in our video. So now I have opened our Blazor demo application in Visual Studio. So you can see the project files inside the Solution Explorer. And here I have created one model class named contact. So this contact model class is having three properties, first name, last name, and email. Okay, we are going to use this in our demo in this particular video. So I will show you what we are going to, how we are going to implement Razor components. Now, just before that, I need to show you this shared folder. So if you are familiar with MVC, in MVC also we have a shared folder and the shared folder will contain the layout file. So main layout is the main, uh, is the layout file. So even in MVC also, the layout file will be inside the shared folder. So here also in the same way, no difference. And here the body will be, yeah, here the body will come. Fine. Now, here we have one more file named underscore imports.razor. So this file will be having so many usings in it. So whatever usings has been mentioned in this file, we can use it directly in any Razor files. So I will show you. Uh, first, I'm opening the index.razor file. And here, 
I'm opening the code. Okay, now declaring a new variable, private list of contact. Contact is the model class and naming it as contacts. But now it will show the error that contact is not available. Yeah, so contact could not be found. So there are two options. Either we can use it here using blazor server app demo dot models. This is one option. Otherwise, anyway, the model namespace, this particular namespace we'll be going, we'll be using in all our razor files. We are going to keep all the model classes inside this folder. So what we can do is we can just copy this or we can just move this particular thing to the underscore imports folder. Uh, sorry, the underscore imports razor file. So now we don't, now we can see that there is no error showing here. So we can use it directly in any razor files now. And I'm overriding on initiate method, on initialized method, fine. Now I'm assigning some values to this contacts is equal to new list of contact, new contact, uh, first name is equal to John, then last name is equal to Thomas, then email is equal to john at gmail.com. Fine. Now we're just copying this and pasting. Okay, we need just three back three contacts. Okay. So the second contact name is Peter and uh, uh, say last name Bob. So Peter gmail.com is the email. Now the last one is George and uh, last name David. Email is george at gmail.com. Fine. Okay. Now in the normal scenario, what we used to do is for each war contact in contacts. Now we are going to display the values here. So let me open a P tag, then bold name, uh, span, um, at rate con uh, at contact dot first, sorry, contact dot first name, then put a space, then contact dot last name. Now, Going to the next, moving to next line, then again bold, email, now italics uh, at contact dot email. Fine. Now this will print all the contacts. Let's see. I'm running the application, so it is getting compiled. The application will be opened in the browser soon. Yeah, it is opening. So as it is in a for each loop, we know that it will get displayed here. Fine. So bold, italics, everything is working fine as expected. Now I'm stopping it. Now let's assume we need to use this particular design, the bold italics or whatever design you give, you have to reuse it in some other razor files as well. Okay. So in that case, normally what you have to do is you have to copy this whole thing and paste it in all razor files. That is one option, but that is not a good option. For that, we have razor components. So I'm copying this and creating a razor component now. So let us let me create it in shared folder or else we can create it here as well. No issues, but if you're creating it here, okay, I'll do one thing. This is the best thing to show an example for you to understand how we can use a razor component which is outside of shared folder for shared folder it is there is no much uh, difference or much deal actually it can be done easily now for example i have created some uh, okay i'm naming it as 
contact. components okay now let's say an example inside that we might have so many kind of designs for contacts okay so inside that contact component one okay fine now removing everything we just need a blank contact component now i'm doing one thing i'm copying this from our index razor file and pasting it here but now it will show the error why because we don't have contact object here fine we don't need it i'm opening code here and the main difference of a normal razor file and a razor component is a razor component does not need routing. Okay, now I will show you in detail. So here, first what I'm doing is I'm declaring some variables here, public first name, oh sorry, forgot to provide the type, okay. Now, next we need public string last name. Next, we need public string email. Fine. Now, what we can do is we can just provide, remove this contact object. Directly, we can give at first side, at first name, at first last name, at email. Okay. But this won't work. Why? Because we need to include one more attribute here. We need to mention this is a parameter, okay? Here also, this is also a parameter. Now, this is also a parameter, fine. Now we have created a component with design, okay? Now what we are going to do is, I'm clicking on this index razor file and removing this. We don't need it. So now what I'm going to do is contact. You can see it here. Contact component is available. So either we can give it like this or else the best option is I can use this namespace here. Not using fine now we don't need this whole namespace just contact component one is enough and now it will ask for the parameters first name as we have mentioned all these are parameters we can directly provide the parameters here first name is contact oh sorry contact dot first name now last name is contact dot last name now email is contact dot email fine let's run the application It is getting opened. Yeah, you can see in the same way, now it has displayed the value. Fine. So now let's see how we can reuse the razor component which we have created. I'm closing this application. Okay, so we have another file named counter.razor. So let me reuse the same component which we have used. Contact component. Okay, I'm giving the whole namespace, let it be there. Otherwise, as we have did before, you can provide this using here on the top. Otherwise, I'm just giving it like this. First name is David. Last name is John. Email is David John at gmail.com. Fine. 
So now let me run the application. So here we have we are displaying only one contact instead of using a for each method in our index page. So here in index page we have used for each and displayed four different co contacts. But in counter page now we are displaying only one. So it is it got displayed here. So this is how we can reuse the Razor component. Hope you liked it. So give me a thumbs up for this video. Now let us move to some advanced methods or advanced things about Razor components. So now I'm going to make some changes in our contact component 01 Razor file. So anyway, we know that we are going to display the first name, last name, and email, the properties of contact class, model class. So instead of passing this as three different parameters, I'm doing one thing, I'm creating a parameter, public, I'm directly passing the contact object to this razor component. Uh, so I'm naming this as current contact. Fine, now we don't need all this. What we are going to do is current contact dot first name, then current contact dot last name, current contact dot email. Okay. Now in our index razor file, instead of providing all these things, what we can do is we can directly provide current contact is equal to contact. Contact is the object. What we are getting from the for each. Okay, now I'm running the application. It is getting loaded, yep. In the same way, the contacts has been loaded. Now, let's see how we can pass arbitrary parameters. So this is very important because in your real application, you need to pass multiple parameters. Multiple parameters means you might need to pass a lot many parameters. So in our current scenario, the only option is you have to declare this kind of public variables and provide this parameter attribute. But what if we need a lot many we need to pass a lot many parameter without uh, mentioning everything in a public variable there is a simple option for that so that is called arbitrary parameters so for explaining that i'm creating a new razor component so here i'm naming this as uh, my text box dot razor fine now here uh, let's say an example we only have an input okay now input is having lot many attributes like type then disabled placeholder so many attributes are there so what i'm going to do is one option is if, for example if i need to show a placeholder I can mention it like this and provide the parameter attribute. And here I can mention at the rate, sorry, placeholder is equal to at placeholder. Okay. Now after this for each loop, what I'm going to do is I'm calling this my text box and placeholder is sample placeholder fine now i'm running the application so it will show a sample placeholder this we can test it whether it is getting displayed yes it is just getting displayed it is showing sample placeholder now what if i need to pass lot many parameters to this component so here what i'm going to do is instead of this placeholder, I'm declaring a public dictionary of string 
and value type of object. And I'm naming this as custom attributes. You can provide whatever name you need. That is up to you. And here in input, what I'm, pro, uh, I'm giving is attributes equal to custom attributes. Now here in this parameter attribute, we can provide catch, uh, sorry, capture unmatched values equal to true. So it will capture unmatched values as well. Okay. Now, <laughs> here, now in my text box, I'm just removing this and directly giving place holder is equal to place holder zero one. Okay. Now, another thing what I'm providing is type is equal to text. Now, another thing disabled equal disabled. And we can provide whatever attributes we need. Now, let me run the application and let's see whether it is working as expected. It is getting loaded. Yeah, fine. Now you can see this is disabled and it is showing placeholder. And if we inspect that, you can see the type text also has been mentioned here. So everything has been completely, yeah, all the attributes has been placed here. Fine. So this is how you can show, uh, you can pass arbitrary attributes. Now we can pass this uh, arbitrary parameters in different methods. So this is one method. Another way is I can mention attributes is equal to, then I can declare it explicitly. So new dictionary of string comma object. Now, here I can provide it like disabled is disabled. Now, um, place holder, sorry, place holder is some, okay, I'm just giving this is a contact name as placeholder. Then next is type text. Fine. In this way also it will work. Let's see. And you can see now it is disabled and the contact name is, uh, the placeholder is contact name and type text is also there. Fine. Now there is one more method. So instead of giving everything here, declaring it explicitly, what we can do is we can create a variable private dictionary of string object is equal to, sorry, um, my text box attributes, I'm just naming it as my text box attributes is equal to name, okay. Now, is equal to um, placeholder oh sorry i need to open curly braces here placeholder is let's say this first name now i'm giving disabled okay now here what i'm doing is attributes, I'm giving this variable name. So let me run the application. And you can see now it is showing the placeholder which we, which we have given first name. So everything is working as expected. Next, let's see something about events. So I'm opening this contact component zero one, that is the component which we have created before. So let's say we have another, okay. 
let's say we have a private variable here private bool display info is equal to false okay now here i have a span and okay uh, i'm just giving an if condition here if display info is true then sorry then span okay um inside the span we will show the e the email address is current email or the email address of this particular customer of first name and last name is okay now after this we have a button okay now the button is show info here now we have a lot many events for buttons so you can see on about on blur on cancel on can play on click so this is the click event then on change a lot many events are the four text boxes for inputs we can use on change event at all so here what i'm doing is i'm okay i'm using on click event now i'm just declaring it or i'm using uh, declaring the method explicitly so in order uh, instead of when she, uh, declaring the method here in the code part i'm just using the explicit method so display info is equal to true sorry okay so the on click event is display info is equal to true so initially the display info will be false then once the user click on this button this display info will become true and if display info is true then we will show this span okay let's run the application okay you can see there are buttons for all the three records now i'm clicking this button and you can see it is showing this info here now now for all it is showing the info fine so here we can do a small adjustment to show and hide the info we can provide it like this Now I am clicking on show info, it is showing, and again I am clicking, it will hide. Okay. So hope you understood the logic. It is display info is equal to not display info. It means if display info is true, then it will be assigned to false. If it is already false, then it will be assigned to true. Fine. Now another thing what I need to show you is uh, for an example, I am creating one more new parameter. Sorry parameter uh, public bool display email okay fine now in this index razor before this uh, for each we are having an input type checkbox okay and here a label 
um, display email. Okay, now what I need to do is if this checkbox is checked, then we have to show the email. Otherwise, we have to hide the email. Okay, so we have display email here. Now, here in the component class, uh, component file, what we need to do is we have to provide an if condition if display email is true. Sorry, I forgot the at sign. Oh, no, this already here. Okay. Uh, if display email is true, then only we should display this. Otherwise, it is not needed. Okay. But this is a parameter. It should come from the parent reserve file. Now, here, what I need to do is I need to, I am creating one new variable, private bool display email. Okay. So initially it will be false. Fine. Now um, I'm creating a new event on change. And I'm just mentioning, uh, I'm just declaring it explicitly as did before. Display email is equal to display email okay so initially the checkbox will be false so when it changed means if we tick the checkbox then it will become true now we need to pass one more thing here display email is display email okay so now we are passing contact there are two different parameters current contact and display email. So we are passing both here. Fine. Oh, sorry, I forgot to provide the semicolon. Okay, now I'm running the application. It is getting opened. Okay, fine. Now you can see the display email checkbox here and here now the email is hidden in and it is not showing anywhere. So if I'm clicking this, then instantly you can see the email got displayed. Okay. And if I'm clicking it again, means if I am unchecking the checkbox, it will get hidden. Okay. Now, instead of this on change event, we can use a simple method uh, or we can use data binding for this. So data binding is a two way binding. It will synchronize the data between the input and the variable and it is a two-way binding so if we change the variable value it will change automatically uh, the input uh, for example if it is a checkbox and we are changing the value to the variable to false it will untick the checkbox and in the same way if we tick the checkbox it will change the variable so it will bind in both ways so let's see how it works so now instead of on change what I can do is I can provide bind equals now here display email. That's it. Now you can see yeah, I'm running the application. So in the same way it will work and I need to show you one more thing. So now I'm clicking on it and you can see it got displayed and it is getting hidden when I'm unchecking it. Now, one more thing, as we have binded the value, now if I'm directly mentioning here, the display email value is true. I don't need to make this checkbox uh, value or it, uh, I, know I don't need to make this uh, checkbox checked it will automatically will get checked when once the page loads why because the display email value is true that is why i told you it is binded in both ways so now i'm opening the page and you can see now this is already checked and it is showing the email as well in the components 
and if I'm unchecking it, it will hide the email. Okay, fine. Now in data binding, I need to show you one more thing. We have a counter class here. Say for example, in this counter class, now what is happening is uh, there is a variable named current count equal to zero. And once this on click event increment count got executed, it, it is just incrementing the value of this variable current count. Now I need one more thing. Um, okay, I am providing an input type text, sorry, text, oh, sorry, text. Uh, okay, no need to provide the input type. I'm just providing bind equals current count. Fine. So now I have binded this input to this current count variable. Now let's see how this works. Okay, I'm opening the counter menu, fine. Now you can see it is showing the value of current count here. And if I'm clicking this, it will change the value of current count. So you can see it here. Now I can change the value of that variable from this text box. So I can provide nine and you can see automatically it got changed here. And if I'm changing it to 10, it got changed. I can change it like this. So once I leave this text box, immediately it will change the value. Okay, so this is how data binding works. Now let's see more about events. So just before starting that, I just need to update that I have updated the Visual Studio version. Now I'm using Visual Studio 2022 and the target framework we, uh, I'm using .NET 6. So in the previous sessions, I have used Visual Studio 2090, uh, 2090 and the framework, target framework, I was using .NET 5. So the reason why I updated is uh, in Visual Studio, we have an option hot reload. So in .NET 6, this hot reload works very perfectly in Blazor. So hot reload means we don't, we don't need to recompile the project again if we have made any changes. If the project is already running, we can just click the hot reload and the changes will take effect on the running project, on the running application. So for showing the demo, it will be much easier. Fine, now let's see more about events. So here, now let us discuss about a scenario. Uh, we know that in our index razor file, in the index page, we have three different contacts mentioned in this contacts variable. So contacts variable is a list of contact. So now if we need to delete some contact, but delete means I'm going to place this delete button in the component eraser component file, not in the index razor file. So the button will be placed inside the razor component file. And if the button clicked, if a user clicked the button, then we have to modify this list. Uh, but uh, here the uh, highlighted point is this list is under the index razor file and the button is in the child component, okay? So first let's create the button. So I'm going to our contact component. Okay, here I'm creating one more button. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm just, okay, delete, okay. Now, if someone click this button, I need to delete the contact which is displayed in this component, okay. So here in index page, what I'm going to do is I'm creating a new method, private void delete contact. So in this method, I need to get some 
identify means I need to identify which contact I need to delete. Okay, so here let's say we are passing the contact object itself to this method as a parameter. Fine. So once we get the contact object from a list, we can easily remove it. What we need to do is contacts dot remove and the object contact symbol. Okay, so this is what we have to do, but let's see how we can call this method from the child component. So here we have an option called event callback. So here I'm declaring one more parameter. Okay, and naming it as public. The type is event call back. Okay. And um, we can provide some name delete contact. Oh, okay, here it is current contact. So I'm just naming it as delete current contact. Okay. Fine. And here I don't need a parameter. Why? Because, oh, sorry, here I don't need oh, yeah, a parameter for this object. Oh, sorry, it is not like this. Oh, this is a parameter file. Oh, okay, now, so I have declared it. Oh, we can use get set here. Fine, yeah. So I have declared it. Okay. And now from the index razor file, what I can do is, okay, here we have one small change. As we have a parameter here, we need to mention what is the parameter that we have to pass along. What is what should be the type of the parameter? So the type of the parameter is contact. So we can mention it like this. Okay. Now from the index razor file, what I can do is I can. Okay, one more. It is asking for the parameter delete current contact. So delete current contact is this method delete contact fine hope you're clear now the next thing what i need to do is now i have not mentioned the on click event so in on click i'm mentioning okay either you can create a new method or you can declare it explicitly so i'm using the explicit method on click equals And here I am call, uh, declaring it explicitly. So here, what I'm doing is uh, I'm using this event callback method, delete current contact dot invoke async. Now we have to pass the parameter. So the parameter is current contact. We know that we have already passed the contact object here. So we can use the same object, current contact, fine. Now let's see how it's how it works. App is getting compiled. It is getting opened. Yeah, it, it is open now. Fine. Now you can see there is a delete button for each item. Now for say example, I am deleting this Peter Bob delete. And you can see now that Peter Bob has been deleted. Like in the same way I can delete John Thomas and George David, everything got deleted. So this is how we can use event callback method. Next, I need to show you uh, about render fragment. So just before that, I'm making some changes in the project. So I'm creating one more Razor component. Uh, clicking add new Razor component and I'm, in, I'm naming this as main contacts or, or okay, contacts, contact list dot Razor. Okay, it is getting created. Yeah, fine. Now here, what I'm doing is, 
in our index, we have this, uh, okay, uh, I'm moving this input and all these things. Okay, input and this for each to this razor component, to the new component, okay? So here, now um, we need code. And what I'm doing is I'm passing the contacts list to this component, okay, so here in Razor, we have, okay, uh, make, we are moving this to the uh, new component file, public contacts, get set, okay, in contacts, file, um, and this checkbox is here, right? So okay, display email. Oh, sorry, from the index file, I'm moving this display email to this. Okay, fine. Uh, now we need this delete contact. So delete contact is here. I'm moving this as well. Oh, so list name is contacts, fine. Now, so in index, now we don't need uh, this list of, oh, okay, we need the list of com contacts, but this one display email is not needed. Fine, and here, now I'm importing the contact list, okay? And the contact list, we need to pass the contacts as parameter, so, this should be parameter, okay? So I can pass this to fine. I'm passing the contacts as parameter. Uh, rest all things, let it be in the same way. So from the index razor file, we are initializing this contacts variable. And once it is initialized, we will pass it to contacts. So now let's me uh, let's run the application. Let me check whether it is working fine. I need to make some more changes in order to show the demo of razor fragment. Okay. So it is working fine. Okay, delete, display email. Everything is working fine. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I need to show you one more method which we can override is on initialized async. Okay. So here, now I'm moving this initialization method, contacts initialization to on initialized async. Fine. And I don't need this method anymore. So on initialized async will work asynchronously. So now I will show you one uh, once again by running the application. Yeah, everything is working fine. Okay. Now, in this on initialized async method, I am just using task.delay to delay 
for some time. Say uh, we are in a real application uh, for fetching the data from the database. Anyway, here we have hard coded the values, but in a real application, we will be fetching the data from database and all. So it may take some time. So say I'm uh, uh, waiting for some three seconds or five seconds. Okay, task the delay five seconds. Oh, wait and let's make this a sync fine now let me run the application and now you can see there is an error so this error is from our razor file. So it says that now the contacts is null. So as we have initialized, as this is an asynchronous method and we have de delayed it for five seconds. So immediately after the application got loaded, there is no data in this contacts variable. So that is why it is showing that the contacts is null. So here, what we can do is, I'm going to this method and here what I'm doing is if this contacts object is null and else part. So inside else part, I can provide this for each method. Okay, so if it is not null, we have to show the contacts details, but if it is null, then here we will show a span. Oh, okay, and otherwise, okay, span um, contacts are loading. So you can show some uh, loading animation or anything. Fine. Okay, now I'm running the application again. Okay, we don't need to run the application each and every time we have the hard hold a hot reload option so next time we can use it mm. but uh, the message not shown right okay the con it is showing here actually we need to move it to the next slide so i'll do one thing here in our application i'll just use VR tag here. Okay. Now hot reload. We don't need to reload it again and again. Now I'm reloading it. So you can see now it is showing contacts are loading. And after five seconds, the contacts will get loaded. So once you got the data from the database, immediately you can show it here. Fine. Now another thing, uh, we can also show one more thing uh, here. I'm just giving an else if part. If contacts, contacts dot count is equal to zero. So that means we got the data from database, but there is no data. So in that case, we can show something like no contacts to display. Okay. So if there are no contacts, then it will display this message. So I'm just for, uh, okay, I'll do one thing. I'm just commenting this out. Okay. And just initializing the value of contacts so that it will not be null is equal to new list of contacts. Fine, now I'm clicking on hot reload. So once it is reloaded, we will see a tick sign here. Now I'm refreshing it. And you can see contacts are loading. And after some time, after five seconds, it is showing no contacts to display. Fine, so it is working fine. Now I'm removing this. Anyway, we need contacts to show the demo. So let it be here. Um, okay, I'm commenting those, saving it. 
now let me minimize all this fine <clears> here <throat> we don't need to stop the application as we have the hot reload option i really love that option actually uh, it is very easy to debug and uh, show the demos and all fine so now what we are going to do is uh, for example i need to show this uh, if contact is null i need to show this uh, thing from the index page i need to provide i have to provide this design in index from index razor file so in that case what we can do is we can declare one more parameter okay and public render fragment okay now i'm naming it as child content so if you have only one child content then what you can do is you can just name it as child content and here now what i'm doing is um, if contact is null i'm using like this child content and removing this we don't need this we have to provide this from our index razor file so how to provide i will show you we can just provide it we can mention the design here so contacts are loading and here uh, for showing the demo i'm inside the brackets i'm showing from index razor okay now we'll understand whether, whether it is getting loaded from here or not now I'm doing the hot reload. And okay, now we will come to know that your contacts are loading from index razor. Fine. And once it is loaded, we will see the data. So this is how we can use a render fragment. Now, if we need to use multiple render fragments, so say example, now here we have uh one more design here if there are no contacts at all so in that case if we need to uh, render this uh, design also from the main razor file then what we can do is i'll do one thing i'm just renaming this as null fragment sorry null uh, null contacts okay now another parameter public render fragment empty contacts okay fine now two different render fragments now here what i'm doing is okay here instead of child content i'm using null content okay now i'm moving this design to index razor file now here what you need to um, understand is if we have multiple designs or multiple render fragments then we have to mention the name of the render fragment otherwise you can just name it as child content and provide it like this if we have multiple then what we have to do is uh, null contacts is this one okay and the next is empty contacts is okay uh, actually empty contacts is this one and null contacts is this one hope i'm right yes no contacts to display so here also i'm doing one thing from index razor i'm showing that message so we'll understand it is coming from the main index razor file and here now again i'm doing the same thing i'm just commenting this out to check whether we are receiving the correct messages from the index razor so contacts is equal to new list of contact so the list will be empty after five seconds so till five seconds it will be null and after five seconds it will be empty okay now doing the hot reload cannot be compiled okay then fine stop and running it again 
So it is getting compiled now. Oh, it is not getting compiled. Okay, I'm running it. Okay, it is working. Okay, now you can see the contacts are loading from index razor. And now again, you can see no contacts to display from index razor. So both designs are coming from the main razor file. So we are passing this through the render fragment parameter. So this is how we can use render fragment. Now, final few things about razor components. So now the next thing what I need to show you here is now you can see that we have HTML components and the C sharp code in a single razor file. So we can use this in two different files if you need a separate C sharp class and uh, there we can mention all these C sharp code. So that can be done. So I will show you how we can do that. Now for say example, we have the index razor file and here I need to move these C sharp codes to a different file. Okay, so let me create a new C sharp class for that. So inside pages folder, so we have this index.razor inside this pages folder. So under that, I'm creating a new class. And for this class, we need to name it like index.razor. Dot CS. Okay, now you can see the class has been created. Now, if we open the solution explorer, you can see that this CS, the new class has been placed under this C sharp, uh, sorry, under this index razor file. So there is a right arrow here. If we click on it, we can see the new class here. Now, one more thing we need to do. This should be a partial class. That's it. Now we can move all the C sharp code to this class. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, we can uncomment this. Fine. Now, we have to use models here. Okay, fine. So, yeah. And we don't need this code part anymore. Fine, now let's see by running this application, whether it is working fine. So it is getting compiled. Yeah, it will open now. I think, yeah, it is getting opened. Fine, now it is showing the contacts are loading. Now it is null after five seconds. Yeah, it will get loaded. So everything is working fine. So here in this way, we can move our C sharp code to a separate CS file. So if your design, uh, you might be having not many components inside your design. So it not, it, uh, in my opinion, it won't look good if we have both in a single file. So it is, in my opinion, it is best to move our C sharp code to a different CS file. The only thing is we need to make it as a partial class and the naming should be like this, okay? Now, one more thing I need to show you is, uh, say example, in our index razor file, we have one H1 tag, okay? So index page, fine. Okay, and same in the way we have, um, oh, okay, here there is already one H1 tag, counter. Fine, now 
if I need to display or if I need to have a different color for this h1 tag in index page, obviously we can use CSS class for that. So here in Razor, uh, in Blazor, we have one more option. We can create a CSS class, especially for this in a Razor component. So I'm clicking on new item and just searching for style sheet here, yeah, here it is. And here also we have to use the same naming convention like index.razor.css. And you can see now that also got placed under this index.razor file. So you can right click it and see the CSS. Now whatever class, CSS class, or whatever things we have mentioned here, CSS stylings we have mentioned here, it will be only applicable for this index razor file. So for uh, um, index razor file, uh, h1 tag, I'm mentioning the color, it should be red, okay. And let me run the application now. Just getting opened. Sorry. Let me close this and open it again. It's getting loaded. Fine, yeah, now you can see that might be because of some bugs or something, some issue. Fine, now you can see here we have the H1 tag here and it is showing in the red color. And in counter, again, we have H1 tag, but it is showing in black. So this, whatever uh, CSS style we have mentioned inside index.razor.css, it will be only applicable for this index razor file. So in this way, we can create both partial class and the CSS styling for each razor component, even if it is a um, uh, this kind of components. For that also, we can create this kind of separate class and CSS files. So this is how, so this is what I need to mention, uh, I need to explain finally. Hope you enjoyed the video and please like and share the video. So see you soon in the next video. Thank you all.